because they couldn't get out of the most technological car there's ever been, right? The bloke is now suing Mazda because he never knew he could use the door handle. <laughs> That's creatively where we're at nowadays. All I see is portfolios um, from people who think using the, using the door handle is dinosaur thinking. Yeah? Everybody tells me that's dinosaur thinking. Now, what I always say is, well, the rest of you are like sheep. And I reckon put a dinosaur in a field full of sheep, the dinosaur fucking wins. <laughs> the creative people are so confused about what their job is, they don't even know. They, all they do is learn the language so they think they'll have credibility. They don't know if their job is content curation, native advertising, crowdsourcing, cross-channel, cross-device, mobile optimised, storytelling, media platform convergence, big data, wearable tech, or whether their job is heuristics, algorithms or metrics, or whether their job is site analytics, rich media, multi-screen experiences, whether their job is SEO, CRM, CSR, CTR, CMS, UGC, KPI or ROI. The only three letters missing for me is WTF. <laughs> you can learn all of that and still not be creative. You're a technician, yeah. And that doesn't mean you're not creative. But none of that is to do with being creative. That is all to do with how pretty the picture looks at the end. None of that is to do with having a great idea. So, if we put, if we think of what De Bono said about creativity being how well do you do your job, <coughs> and we look at what is creativity. Well, first off, let's learn from Einstein. Einstein said, if you can't explain it to an 11-year-old, you haven't really understood it. So what we learn is complex, stupid people think complicated things are clever. Intelligent people know you've got to go beyond complicated to get to simple. So, if we, if we, knowing that, if we look at, in simple terms, what's creativity? Well, in my job, Bill Birnbach was the guy who invented great advertising. And he said, um, it may well be that creativity is the last unfair advantage we're legally allowed to take over our competitors. It may well be that creativity is the last unfair advantage we're legally allowed to take over our competitors. So for me, creativity is a legal unfair advantage. If you can find it, well good, well and good. If you can't, you manufacture it. And you do all of that before you start getting anywhere near the technology of the execution, what it looks like. Einstein said, if the earth was about to end in and I had an hour to save it, I'd find 50, spend 55 minutes defining the problem, because once I've got the problem right, the solution would only take me five minutes. So that's... The execution is the last five minutes, and that's all anybody spends time on. And why it's not creative is they don't spend the previous 55 minutes. My art school was in New York, and it was a Bauhaus art school. And everybody hears, think Bauhaus, and they think, oh yeah, form follows function. Everybody hears that, and then nobody actually gets what that means, form follows function. Form follows function. What it looks like depends on how well it does its job. Nowadays, what it looks like is it must look good and nobody analyzes what's the job to be done. Well, if you've got a beautiful chair and it's not comfortable to sit on, it's not a fucking chair. <laughs> it's a piece of sculpture. If you can't sit on it, it's not a chair. So we start with, we start with looking for an unfair advantage what would that look like in my job? In my job, it would be taking a problem you can't solve and getting upstream of it and changing it to a problem you can solve. Changing it to a different problem by getting upstream of it. So, the for instance we use is two explorers walking through the jungle and one explorer, and, and, and both explorers hear a tiger roar and then they hear the tiger running towards them. And one explorer gets down and starts putting on a pair of running shoes. And the other explorer says, you're crazy, you never outrun a tiger. And he says, I don't have to outrun a tiger, I just have to outrun you. The problem you can't solve is outrunning a tiger. But getting upstream of it, a tiger doesn't have to eat two people. It only has to eat one. I've just got to make sure that isn't me. That's an unfair advantage by getting upstream of it. Uh, so 
taking that, we're looking for an unfair advantage, and we're defining the problem so we can solve the problem. So, in advertising terms, what's the problem that needs to be solved? Well, in the UK, every year, £18.4 billion pounds is spent on all forms of advertising and marketing. Of that, 4% is remembered positively, 7% is remembered negatively, 89% isn't noticed or remembered. So what do we think the problem might be? It won't be the 4% that's remembered positively. That's a good thing, that works. Most stupid people think it's the 7% that's remembered negatively. No, that still works. Nobody has to like your advertising for it to work. Nobody has to like a chair to be able to sit on it. That still works. But how about the 89% that isn't noticed or remembered? That can't possibly work. Bill Birnbeck said, if no one notices your advertising, everything else is academic. So there's 89% of 18.3 billion, that's roughly 17 billion quid, pissed away by so-called experts. Now that's the real problem that needs solving. If you think that's too harsh, they reckon in a major conurbation, a big city, we're each exposed to 2,000 advertising messages a day between what comes up on your laptop, uh, between pre-rolls, between um, TV, uh, posters in the street, cross tracks on the tube, posters on the buses, ads in the free sheets, the giveaway media, radio. We're exposed to 2,000 messages a day. But let's assume it's only 1,000 messages a day we're exposed to. Apart from what you're working on, just as consumers, hold your hand up if you remember one from yesterday. And add that as a consumer, you saw yesterday one, Just one? Two? Just two? Okay, three. Okay, we've got 100 people here. 1,000 messages each, that's 100,000 messages. We remember three. Can you see what the problem might be? It's fucking wallpaper. There's too much of it. Nobody notices it, nobody cares. It's like concrete. It's all done with the highest technology, all the CGI you can, you can handle, all the photoshopping, all of the beautiful executions, and it's invisible. Because it all looks the same. Because everybody's doing it. If we have a look at... Um, we obviously don't understand the media. The main... Pro By the way, it sounds like I'm angry. I'm not angry. I'm just... <laughs> this is just how I talk. The, uh, I might be angry. No, I'm not angry. The, uh, but if we look at the media, let's look at the history of media and how it's changed. That's the consumer. Now, in order to try to get to the consumer, We've started lots of different ways. First, we had cave paintings at Lascaux. Then you had frescoes and oil paintings. Then they'd use photography, black and white photography. Keep changing. Then it changed again to film. Then it changed again to TV. Then it changed again to digital. And it changed again to social. Then it will pretty soon change to whatever the next big thing that's going to kill all other media and nothing will ever be the same again. Do you notice one thing on there that hasn't changed? One thing on there that doesn't change? One thing on there that never will change? That's the fucking media. These things are not media. This is what stupid people think is media. These are just delivery systems. If you don't trigger that, you never go viral. YouTube doesn't switch itself on, laugh at itself and pass itself on to another bit of YouTube. Facebook doesn't press a button and pass itself on. If this likes it, this will do what it used to do when I was a kid in the playground. We'd tell the joke to someone else and who'd tell the joke to someone else who'd tell the joke to someone else. Uh, or you'd... Nowadays, you send an email with it on to someone else who likes it, so they 
put it on Facebook to someone else who sees someone else and whistles a song or tells a story to someone else and passes it on to someone else. Where it goes viral is in the human mind. That's why it's called viral. It's a virus. It goes viral in the human mind. The human mind is what passes it on. Otherwise, you're saying everything that happened before 1990 couldn't have possibly gone viral because there was no social media before 1990. A client will come in and say to you, I want some viral media. There is no such fucking thing. <laughs> a good idea goes viral, and that can go viral on posters, on telly, as a joke. It can go viral because it's a good idea and because this passes it to this, to this, to this, to this. Let me give you a for instance. Can you play that video, Sean? Let me just um, play you this. It's not a film. This is just a little video shot in the street. The sound is what's important. It's an ice cream truck. And uh, you're just listening to what the ice cream truck's playing. <laughs> See, this is technology. <laughs> if With a pen, I can just write there. <laughs> just listen to the sound. Okay, <clears throat> that was shot last year. That's um, an ice cream truck playing a little tinny old tune that everybody's heard a hundred times every time an ice cream truck comes around. <gasps> Anybody know what the tune's called? Green Sleeves, we all know it. Anybody know who wrote it? Henry VIII wrote it. Henry VIII wrote it in about 1540 when he was trying to pull Anne Boleyn. <laughs> the words on it are... Alas, my love, you do me wrong to cast me off discourteously, for I have loved you so long, delighting in your company. Green sleeves was all my joy, green sleeves was my delight, green sleeves was my heart of gold, and who but my lady, green sleeves. Apparently she was famous, she used to wear green on her dresses, and he quite fancied it. The, the 500 years later, it's on ice cream trucks, and we all know it. Henry VIII wrote it. Where the fuck was Twitter? Where the fuck was Facebook when Henry VIII wrote it? How come 500 years later we still know it? There wasn't even any electricity in Henry VIII's day. How has that lasted 400 years down to today when there was no possible medium of transferring it other than human beings liking it and playing it to other human beings? That's how a thing goes viral. It goes viral because it's a good idea. Every day... You've read the, the, the numbers. Every day, every, every hour, 20 hours are uploaded to YouTube that's never ever seen on, because they're crap ideas. They're rubbish ideas. Just uploading it onto, onto social media doesn't make you go viral. If it's not a good idea, nothing happens. The, David Abbott said, um, shit that arrives at the speed of light is still shit when it gets there. <laughs> the, the medium itself is not what makes it go viral. It's the human mind, the bit in the centre, that makes it go viral. The human mind in the centre is what makes it go viral. Now, given that, and given that we know complexity works, sorry, given that we know simplicity works and complexity doesn't, how does the human mind work? So... Every complication, every um, communication you've had from the day you're born till the day you die has to tick three boxes to be successful. 